Hi everyone, Odon here in the Tri-State Show Traffic Center and welcome to this exclusive first look of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. Gonna be our first look and first impressions of the Chevrolet Blazer EV from uh, Chevy. Uh, just a uh, an awesome vehicle as you saw in the opening montage there of some of the running footage. Uh, this is um, an important a vehicle for General Motors uh, based on the Ultium platform. Uh, this is uh, one of many, many vehicles uh, that will be uh, forthcoming in the years uh, to come uh, from uh, General Motors, from uh, GMC, Cadillac, Buick, and Chevrolet. But this is uh, my first look, my first impressions of the 2024 uh, Chevrolet Blazer EV. So let's get right into it now. Uh, let's take, uh, we're going to kind of go through the running footage first, and then we'll get into all the specs and all of the information. I just want to give you some of my first impressions from what I am seeing here. Again, we're seeing this in real time for the first time but together. Uh, this is our first look of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. So right off the bat, first of all, anybody who knows me very well and has been a subscriber to the Tri-State Traffic Show for a long time knows that I am very partial to red. Uh, every car just about I've always owned is a red. I have a uh, red Cadillac ELR, Cadillac's first electric vehicle. Go to our YouTube page. You can see that video there. Um, but again, I'm partial to red, so I love the color on this uh, this. Uh, Chevy 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. So you can see the size of it. It's a fairly substantial vehicle. Uh, just looking at some of the running footage here, um, it actually looks to be um, a little lower than the actual ice-powered, gas-powered um, Chevrolet Blazer. And uh, we're going to get some uh, exterior outside. Again, this is just from running footage uh, that we're running from Chevrolet. We want to thank uh, Kelly uh, and the media department for hooking us up for with the uh, video as well as some of the pictures that we'll show you um, forthcoming. Again, this is our first look of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. So you can see full panoramic roof. That's what I'm seeing there. Obviously, we have our shark fin antenna on the back. So it's nice to see the panoramic roof, um, you know, making its way into some of the Chevrolet products. And that shot right there, I think, gives an indication of uh, the lower specs on the roof. You know, we're really uh, you have that sleek profile, almost like that coupe like standpoint of almost a, you know, hot hatch type uh, vehicle. But again, it's a fairly uh, substantial sized vehicle, again, based on the ultimate Ultium, Ultium platform, uh, the battery packs, uh, the SS moniker, always great to see that, right? We've got the uh, Camaro SS, you know, SS back in the day, uh, Super Sport. And, uh, you know, Chevrolet put that on just about, it seems like every car back in the 80s and 90s. But, you know, uh, getting into the specs, which we'll do in just a moment, uh, the SS is really performance oriented. You know, the Camaro SS, um, just really high performance. That's what you immediately think of when you think Chevy and SS is a performance. And you can see uh, the great looking grill. If you, if you even want to call it a grill, um, because there are no, uh, you know, there's no need for any kind of radiator or any kind of cooling. So now this is our inside, our first look of the inside. And um, you can see great looking screens across the board. Um, that's a 17.7 inch infotainment uh, screen in the center stack. Uh, just absolutely beautiful looking, um, you know, very high tech as all these, uh, you know, electric cars today are uh, kind of, you know, with screens everywhere, right? You know, we're in this high tech world. You see the beautiful digital instrument panel there. Um, very, very customizable. Um, it's very interesting how it says 48,211 miles. So I'm assuming this is one of the... Um, test mules that they are uh, sometimes called. Uh, actually, I'm going to stop the video here. 
uh, for one second. Just want to show you. Uh, and again, I can't do that without that coming up. So uh, that's kind of cool. I wonder if there is a way to change that as far as uh, to the color of your car, with it red, white, and again, um, any of the other colors in the color palette uh, from Chevrolet. But here's some of the inside footage. Again, has those round uh, dial, round um, air vents. Uh, very reminiscent of the Camaro, which in some ways some people call the ICE Blazer, the internal combustion engine Blazer, um, almost a four-door Camaro um, because of the very high, uh, you know, the uh, sculpted look of it, of the uh, Camaro with those round. Those are the temperature. You can control the temperature gauges by just spinning the outside wheel on those uh, uh, air vents which is really a cool kind of gives the aircraft fighter type of look. And that's kind of what I'm even seeing here um, in just our initial um, first uh, look of the inside with uh, the, the video. This is again, our first impressions of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. Uh, let's continue to run some of the footage here on the inside. And you see, boy, those screens are absolutely gorgeous looking, you know, uh, wireless uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, um, you know, it's kind of the norm, kind of the standard now uh, across the board. And these gorgeous uh, red seats, you know, Chevy has always done a great job. And now with the Corvette, with the uh, adrenal and red dipped interior for the 3LT package on the Chevrolet Corvette for 2023. Uh, you know, I always love the red interiors. You know, even back in the day, they had the full white interiors, but uh, we're seeing a lot more of the uh, red interiors um, into uh, a lot of the modern day vehicles. Now, again, this is an SUV, so those back seats will fall down as you can see it here. So uh, some decent cargo room. Again, we'll get all, into all the specs. We just wanted to give you uh, some idea of what the outside looks like, what the uh, inside looks like as well. And we'll, like I said, we'll get into the specs in uh, just a couple of moments. So again, it is an SUV still. You know, um, even with that little bit lower roof line from some of the shots that we saw uh, just a moment ago. Um, but um, this is some of the uh, exterior shots of it actually on stage, as they call it, from Chevrolet as it's moving around. I love the lighting pattern there from uh, the front headlights. That is really cool looking, especially with the Chevy bow tie that's lit up like that. That is really, really sharp. Um, we're going to let this play through because I want to show you the uh, lighting sequence here. Um, very much like the Cadillac Lyric. So now this is the lighting sequence as the vehicle is being turned off. That is so cool. I think that is really sharp. And then this is now when you go ahead and turn the vehicle on. This is the lighting sequence that you see as you uh, turn the vehicle on for the first time. Very, very cool. It's amazing what they can do with LED lights. Um you know, has these really kind of unique signature patterns that certainly that's something you, you see that in your rear view mirror that you'll definitely know it's a Chevy with the illuminated Chevy badge. You know, the Cadillac Lyric has that whole uh, sequence as well in the front with the Cadillac uh, crest, or the Cadillac logo, as you say, no longer the crest. That's on my car, the ELR, but uh, the Cadillac logo um, is illuminated. I think really gives it just such a unique, sharp look and definitely says, you know, uh, this is the the new American muscle, if you want to call it that, in electrification. Very, very sharp looking. I, I, I think that really is very, very cool uh, that uh, those signature lighting patterns there, uh, almost that um, kind of hockey stick looking um, daytime running light with the headlights that will be uh, right underneath it here. Um, so, uh, really, uh, very, very, uh, sharp looking lighting package here from the front. And, uh, again, when we're seeing this in real time, I love how that Chevy badge gets uh, illuminated. I think that is so, so cool. That is, uh, really something to, uh, be said about that. Really a, uh, sharp, uh, look at that. Again, this is our first look of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. Thanks for watching here on the Tri-State traffic show traffic channel and there's that electric pattern of the uh, the uh, door i should say the power electric uh, door very much like the cadillac lyric as well um which opens up the charging port again we'll get into all the specs just wanted to show you the vehicle first and uh, really get your uh, kind of whet your appetite for what is to come with the uh the specs um of this uh, amazing uh, chevy blazer 2024 ev model 
So there you just, and you just push the uh, panel back up. So looking at that, it didn't look like it was a powered panel on the way up, maybe on the way down, you're able to power open that, but this didn't look like it was, look, it was a manual close of the electric charging port. Again, on my Cadillac ELR, it's just a round little port because mine does not have DC fast charging. Um, but here's some of the signature lighting um, from the back. Very cool, right? I mean, it's, you know, futuristic, you know, kind of the the, the future is here, right? I mean, it, this is kind of, if you grew up a, uh, kid in the 80s and 90s like myself um you know really uh you know we we were looking for this kind of futuristic look and this is really what we're seeing now you know very unique uh lighting signature patterns in so many vehicles and uh, general motors uh, doing a nice job first with lyric and now with the 2024 chevy blazer ev um all right so let's get to some of these specs so this is the uh, press release um, that has just come out uh, with the reveal here this evening. Uh, the all electric 2024 Chevrolet a Blazer EV and uh, reimagine, reimagines, I should say, customer choice, performance, and design. So the lineup offers trim, drive system, and range options for the first electric SS performance model. We love to hear the word performance, right? Uh, we, th- I just, I just, that's just, just amazing. You know, uh, electric vehicles with all that instant torque. You know, even my car, I'm just going to take the banner down here so we can uh, see more of this. Um, even in my car, you know, uh, 2014 ELR, you know, it probably weighs 40, some uh, four, over 4,000 pounds plus because those batteries are really heavy. And that car has plenty of get up and go with those electric motors. Um, you know, zero to 60 in about, seven and a half seconds or so but for a vehicle that heavy is uh is really amazing and that was you know model years that's 10 years from what uh 10 years earlier than what the uh 2024 blazer is all right let's uh let me see if i can expand on this here because i just want to make sure that everyone's able to see it uh so let's kind of run down this entire document uh in real time shall we um we will go here uh, back up towards the top of the uh, page, and uh, we'll start it there and then work our way down, shall we? Uh, so today revealed uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, the all-electric 2024 Blazer EV, expanding the brand's growing EV portfolio, making EV ownership more accessible, and driving Chevy into the heart of the growing midsize electric crossover market. Uh, multiple distinct trims, multiple range options, including uh, an available GM estimated range of the 320 miles on a charge. So uh, that is um, quite a bit there. 320 miles on a charge. And I still think, you know, 300 miles is maybe the real sweet spot for it, you know, um, because, you know, in most cases, you know, uh, lots of folks with EVs are going to be charging the vehicles at home. You know, um, there's a certain amount of the population obviously lives in apartments, the condominium complexes and so forth, aren't able to take advantage of the uh, home charging. But uh, again, for the most part, most uh, individuals are going to be uh, charging their vehicles at home. Um, so 320 miles on a charge, you kind of just, you know, you come home and you plug it in, just like your cell phone, right? I mean, everybody today, pretty much has a cell phone, I think, except for maybe a select few. Um, But, uh, you know, you plug that in every night before you go to bed and it just is fully charged in the morning. That's pretty much exactly what you'll do here uh, with um, a new Blazer and any other electric vehicle that you may have. So, you know, 300 miles is probably about what you'd get for a gas vehicle, you know, um, my daily driver, I maybe on a tank, I'd get maybe 275 at best, you know. So in some ways, maybe you wouldn't even fully charge for an entire week, you know, depending on your driving habits and your commute and so forth and whatever else you're doing around town. So, you know, 320 miles is is really a um, really a great range uh, for this vehicle. Now. 
doesn't say whether that's the SS Performance Models 320 or that's going to be kind of the base model, the 1LT or the 2LT. You know, as you get into words performance, certainly you think of it very similar in a gas uh, engine. You know, performance models are going to have less gas mileage than the base models uh, will have. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, but up to 320 miles on a full charge. And it's also available uh, front, rear, and all-wheel drive configurations. Offers customers more choices and a seamless EV experience uh, designed to complement virtually every lifestyle. So um, let's uh, take a look at the, the trim options. And this is going to be the uh, 1LT, the uh, 2LT, the RS, and Chevy's first ever SS performance model. So we love to see that, uh, right? We love to see the word SS in, uh, in any kind of performance model from Chevrolet. The Super Sport, uh, that has uh, been a um, mainstay of Chevrolet performance uh, over the last 100 years or so. So again, it's uh, 1LT, 2LT, the RS, and the SS model. And this is interesting that they're going to produce a uh, PPV, the police, police Pursuit Vehicle for police fleet applications. So now they're going to make a police vehicle. Uh, the uh, Chevy Blazer EV is going to be a uh, potentially for state police, local police authorities, county police authorities to go ahead and go all electric. You know, they're going to really try to go after the um, market uh, that the Ford Explorer has certainly dominated for, oh gosh, I don't even know, maybe the last 10 years plus or so. Um, with the Ford Explorer, it seems like every police department out there has got a Ford Explorer. You know, it's just it's just so much easier. It's just so much more room uh, in the back with the SUV. We also have the uh, higher clearance, um, you know, in SUVs. Now, this seems to be a little bit lower than, uh, let's say, the regular gas uh, Blazer model. But it's interesting that they're making that into a police uh, pursuit vehicle for uh, departments that are looking to uh, go green as we get into uh, the uh, mid 2020s. So the, let's continue on here. 2024 EV Blazer uh, sets new tones for electric SUVs with options and intuitive technologies that help position Chevy for leadership in one of the fast growing EV segments. Said Scott Bell, vice president of Chevrolet, <laughs> along with the all new Silverado EV and Equinox EV that's coming next year. So the Equinox is the kind of the smaller of the um, lineup for uh, Chevy SUVs. And they are saying, you know, that that vehicle may start around $30,000, which would be, I think, a definite game changer. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, definitely, uh, we'll see where that pricing uh, does come in. Um, so we will uh, continue on now. Now, the uh, EV is based on GM's innovative Altium platform, as I mentioned uh, before. Um, the athletic styling that elevates the heralded design established in 2018 by the gas-powered Chevy Blazer and performance cues inspired by the Camaro and Corvette. So again, that's what I said, is that a lot of people do call the Chevy Blazer in the top trim performance model, uh, you know, like a four-door Camaro, basically, because the inside, the screen looks very much similar to the Camaro. Also, those air vents that control the temperature, uh, you spin those. And they um, change the uh, temperature, uh, you know, uh, from 68 to 70 degrees or what have you. So it's very heavily inspired by the Camaro. Uh, with design and engineering developed to live up to the legacy of the iconic Super Sport Performance designation, Blazer EV SS offers customers the most powerful experience in the lineup. Features an exclusive performance all-wheel drive propulsion configuration designed to produce up to 557 horsepower and up to 648 foot-pounds of torque. Incredible. That is a lot of horsepower coming out of the uh, Blazer. Now, I'm sure they're squarely setting their sights at the uh, Kia EV6 GT, which is going to have probably similar horsepower uh, and torque numbers. Uh, from that vehicle, but um, they are going literally, literally full throttle uh, with the uh, Blazer EV uh, Super Sport SS model. Um, looking at uh, zero to sixty time in less than four seconds. Again, that's just an estimate; is uh, less than four seconds. Uh, but um, 
you know, we shall see, may even be a little bit faster, dare I say, three and a half. I I'm thinking probably somewhere in that three, four to three, six range or so, you know, because if they, you know, if they increase the horsepower and the torque, got out towards, you know, under three seconds, you know, you're looking at Corvette numbers. I don't know if, whether they want to encroach on performance wise into the uh, Corvette space. Now, again, we're talking different vehicles. You know, one is an SUV and the other one is the Corvette. That's all you need to know, right? Um, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see what these 0, 60, uh, 0 to 60 times uh, come in at. And also a unique, wow, wide open Watts mode, which will enable that uh, less than four second um, 0 to 60 time. So the Chevy has wow, the GMC Hummer has WTF, and we all know what that stands for, but that's Watts to Freedom on the GMC Hummer. This is WOW, Wide Open Watts, which is uh, very, very cool. I wonder if there are other versions of this are going to, you know, when Buick comes online with their um, all-electric vehicle, uh, whether they'll have a, a certain moniker as well, but uh, very, very cool Um here for the Chevy Blazer. Uh, let's continue on now. Um, the Blazer EV SS has the soul of a true sports car. That's what uh, Mr. Bell has said. And while it represents the pinnacle performance for, uh, for Chevy's EV lineup, all models offer sturdy capabilities that will surprise and delight true performance devotees. <laughs> the Blazer EV highlights include, uh, we'll come down to the next page, uh, driving range options up to an available estimated 320 miles on a full charge depending on the trim so that's what i said i really think that the uh you know the base model if you want to call it that the 1lt 2lt will probably uh, be that 320 miles i'm thinking the rs and the ss will be probably a little bit less um you know if you think of it again in gas terminologies so to say obviously a, a v8 engine with 450 horsepower like the Camaro SS has will get less gas mileage than the four-cylinder turbo model in the 1LT, 2LT, or even the V6 model. So kind of think of it in that um, distinction. 11.5 uh, uh, kilowatt level two onboard charging and standard DC public fast charging capability of up to 190 kilowatts. So that's pretty fast, uh, depending on the model, which enables approximately 78 miles of range to be added in 10 minutes. And that's per uh, General Motors uh, estimate. So again, adding 78 miles in less than in about 10 minutes or so, that's pretty good. You know, I mean, if you're just out and about and you just plug in for 10 minutes and get 78 miles, depending on where and how your um, commute goes, that's 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 pretty good. Again, it's not really necessary to charge the vehicle, you know, every day, you know, and a lot of times they say that, you know, charging an EV, they like it to keep that in, in between the 10 percent and the 80 percent capacity. You know, you never really want to fully charge it, you know, just to have, uh, you know, a little better, better, you know, um, battery life for the main batteries uh, there, you know, think of it as, again, battery technologies, you know, we used to see that many, many years ago with camcorders, the batteries used to, what was then called a memory that would build up and they would only charge to a certain capacity and lose that capacity. But, uh, you know, a lot of folks only charge their EVs up to 75, 80%. And then that's it. You know, you put it on for 10 minutes, and that's it. And you walk away. So a large intuitive 17.7 inch diagonal customizable infotainment touchscreen. We saw that. Uh, we'll go back to the pictures uh, in just a few minutes. But um, again, uh, that is the infotainment touchscreen in the center, as we did see in the video. And uh, this is our first look of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. Thanks a lot for tuning us in. Again, the uh, Blazer EV just revealed just a, a little while ago here on this Monday evening. So we're giving you the uh, first look, our, my first impressions of uh, what uh, this vehicle has to offer. Um, full LED exterior lighting, as we saw that uh, in the uh, B-roll footage. Choreograph walk-up, walk-away animations on both the RS and the SS models. So the base models will not have that, but it's really the top two trims that will have that um, entrance you know, lighting 
So it's a really cool uh, looking package there. Uh, beautiful, spacious, sustainable, sustainably crafted cabin made with soft touch materials. That's always nice to know. Uh, available Super Cruise, which is very cool. Hands-free driving technology for compatible roads. Uh, advanced safety uh, features intended to inspire confidence, including uh, reverse automatic braking and advanced park assist. Uh, let me go to the um, interior pictures and uh, we'll show you a few of those. Um, let's bring those up here. And uh, yeah, so you can see here, um, this is the SS interior. This is the 17.7 inch um, touchscreen. Boy, that's a good look. It's almost bordering on like, you know, a big 77 inch OLED TV screen, like a home theater, you know, um, which is uh, really, really cool. And you do see the uh, instrument panel. Here is the... Uh, the uh, the lights that will come up here for the super cruise system, so um, that has uh, that uh, embedded there. Um, I, there was another interior picture I wanted to bring up, so uh, let's see. We'll bring the RS picture into play, um, which is very similar to the SS picture. Now this is going to be the interior of the LT, which will be just the regular trim, and it looks to me like the screens here are basically the same. So, um, you know, um, it's possible that they're going to give you the 17 and 17.7 inch screen with the lower, uh, trim models. Um, there was a picture here I wanted to bring up. Um, I just got to see if I can find it. Um, let me see if I have it in my overlays on the this side over here. Um, there was a, there was a shot because it does have a head up display. I wanted to show you that as well. Um, let's see, is it this one here? Yeah, so this has the uh, the head-up display. You see this green? This green here is the indication that the Super Cruise is engaged and is working. So it comes up on the steering wheel. There's a camera here that keeps your eyes, um, keeps a look on your eyes to make sure that you are absolutely focused. But, uh, you know, in Cadillac has had Super Cruise for a number of years and it's gotten rave reviews as far as uh, the usability of it. Um, you know, you just get on to uh, the major highways. And I think it's even starting to come down into local local county type roads uh, being mapped as well. But uh, it really takes a lot of stress off of uh, the driving uh, component. So um, I have yet to try that. Uh, and that's something I'd love to, to uh, get my hands on as far as the Super Cruise is concerned to see how that actually works. But um, Again, this uh, is uh, another Chevy that's got the uh, Super Cruise. I believe this is the second Chevy, the Chevy Bolt, the Chevy Bolt with a B, not Volt, the Bolt, because the Bolt is out of production, but the Bolt EUV has a Super Cruise, and that was the first Chevy to incorporate Super Cruise. Again, Cadillac was the first one that had it onto the CT6. You can also, also get it onto the CT4 and the CT5. Uh, so they're working their way through the Cadillac lineup. And, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, these bigger companies, friends, are, you know, this is what they do. They start on the high end, the Cadillacs, and then eventually works itself down to um, the rest of the lineup. So uh, advanced braking and auto, advanced the park assist, I should say. So uh, let's continue on now. Uh, Diamond Athletic Styling infused with Chevrolet's performance DNA to create an expressive design unlike anything else you know, the segment, uh, the Blazers EV design invokes the same sort of emotional response as Chevy's performance cars, said Phil Zach, executive director of Chevrolet design. So thank you, Phil. Uh, there is true SUV functionality, but inside and out has this sort of passionate proportions and feel that make you want to slide behind the wheel and explore what's beyond the horizon. It's a vehicle that looks great from every angle and beckons you to drive. Uh, I would say that is absolutely true. Uh, each of the Blazer EVs trim share a muscular athletic profile enabled by the Ultium platform, including taut, uh, converging body lines. Uh, they convey motion, while prominent front fender extractor vents are a nod to Chevy's motorsports legacy. You know, one of the Chevy cars that I always thought was really cool was the Chevy SS. Uh, just the SS, it was called. They ran that NASCAR for a, a number of years, but um, it was really based on the um, Australian Holden Commodore. A uh, very cool looking car, had a V8 in it, 400 and some odd horsepower. Saw one not too long ago last year in that bright orange, which is an amazing color. 
Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the color palette will be uh, for the Chevy Blazer EV. Uh, distinctive trims take on their own characteristics. Uh, LT featured monochromatic appearance instead of 19-inch wheels, so that's nice. Uh, the RS strikes a sportier presence with a black grille and other black accents, along with the standard 21-inch wheels. Uh, the SS serves up the most aggressive aesthetic with a unique front grille, two-tone color scheme featuring a black roof and eight pillars that complement the Blazer EV's body color and standard 22-inch wheels. So uh, 22-inch wheels are... That's an enormous wheel. Uh, definitely be careful driving that around the tri-state with our tendency to have uh, major potholes whatnot. <laughs> um, just think of, uh, we read that paragraph already. Uh, elevated the Blazer uh, EV's presence uh, further on the RS and SS with a bold dual element LED exterior lighting signature as the choreograph lighting sequences, which activate when the driver approaches or walks away. Full light bar and illuminated bow tie emblem on the front. These elements are incorporated into the lighting sequences. So very, very cool stuff. I uh, really like that. Uh, front lighting also conveys the state of charge while the vehicle charges. So, you know, with my uh, ELR, the, um, the side markers on the side mirrors flash green while the vehicle is charging, which is really cool. And then they go out completely when the vehicle's uh, fully charged. And there's also a light. That's in the uh, it's on the dashboard through the windshield that changes from uh, amber color when it's when you first plug it in and then switches over to green once you make the connection uh, with the vehicle telling you it is charging. Uh, inside a refined cabin also makes a modern design statement like the exterior. Many of its elements draw inspiration from Chevrolet sports cars and performance heritage, such as the flat bottom steering wheel for the RS and SS trims and sculpted vents inspired by turbines. An expansive. 17.7 inch diagonal color touchscreen is the focal point of the cabin and the command center for the vehicle's infotainment system and additional features. A large 11 inch diagonal color driver information center in the instrument cluster complements the central touchscreen. Additional interior highlights include two row layout with ample spaciousness, ample, ample paper, as one Mr. Frank Bardo used to say. Um, and storage options, thanks to a flat floor enabled by packaging of the Ultium battery. Uh, standard ambient lighting with personalization function on the RS and SS trim. So um, I'm thinking that the ambient lighting on the inside, you can change different colors, which seems to be quite popular these days. Uh, unique RS and SS trim and design cues, including blue and red contrasting stitching on the RS and suede microfiber seating on the SS with adrenaline and red seating services and available argon orange accent. Hmm. Pretty cool. Heated and ventilated uh, front seats. I'd like to see what the orange looks like. Um, heated and ventilated front seats on the RS and SS along with heated rear outboard seating uh, seats there that are standard on the RS and available on the RS. So I'm thinking you could probably be able to, you know, price up and option up the RS close to the SS, you know, maybe if you prefer, a, you know, body color painted roof and so forth. Um, technology for every lifestyle. So let's get into this. Uh, Chevy's latest charging infotainment driver assistance, uh, making the transition, making it easier for to transition to all electric vehicles. It all starts when the driver enters the Blazer EV. There's no button to push to start the vehicle with hands-free start. The driver simply pushes the brake pedal after closing the door and the EV, Blazer EV is ready to go. The key fob authorizes the hands-free start system. So we're sort of seeing more of that now, you know, in some of the uh, Hyundai Genesis products, especially the Genesis GV60 has a fingerprint scanner right on the uh, center console um, where you change gears and you just put your finger on it and everything kind of comes to life. So that may be eventually a way we go as well, but uh, very cool stuff, uh, you know, kind of the future is here, right? <laughs> That's what we said, the future is here. Um, transitioning to uh, an electric vehicle seamless with the Blazer EV, says uh, Martin Hayes, Blazer EV chief engineer. Every element and feature has been designed to help customers take full control of their driving experience. Uh, technology highlights include power opening charge port door, uh, we saw that in the video there, in the B-roll video. Um, navigation to charging stations and route planning through the My Chevy app. 
Uh, so that's always a helpful feature to find uh, charging stations as more of these uh, charging stations come online. Regenerative braking, you know, that's one of the beautiful features of driving an all-electric vehicle, and I can do that in my Cadillac as well. There's two paddles on the back of the wheel, and I never even have to touch the brake. I just drag back, pull back that lever, and the car s automatically starts to slow down. And it puts a very minimal amount of electricity back into the pack, uh, but you can enable it to uh, provide one-pedal driving as well, um, where you just use the say gas pedal because there's no gas in an EV, right? It's the uh, throttle accelerator pedal. Maybe that's, we have to come up with different uh, names for the pedals now. Uh, but you can just use that and never touch the brake. You just slowly pull off pressure on the accelerator pedal, and the vehicle will slow down on its own. So that is uh, something interesting. You know, it's going to take some getting used to, but um, it is available to you. And again, the regen braking will add just a very minimal amount of uh, electricity, you know, and kind of in that mountain mode like my car has when you're coming down a large hill, kind of the drag on the vehicle starts to regen electricity. So really, really cool stuff. This is almost like World's Fair kind of stuff, right? Um, available presence-based lift gate for convenience. The tailgate can open hands-free when the key fob is recognized by the sensors at the rear of the vehicle. Uh, available Super Cruise, as we showed you with the green light strip on the top of the um, steering wheel and the, the industry's first true hands-free driver assistance technology, allowing drivers to travel hands-free on compatible roads across the U.S. and Canada. Uh, the Blazer EV also offers the latest driver assistance technologies, including reverse automatic braking. That's always good, and especially these larger um, vehicles that gets maybe a little difficult to see out of the back. So, you know, it has those sensors that will automatically stop the car well, car, I should say, or SUV, uh, when something gets in its way. So um, I think that's uh, very handy. Advanced Park Assist, the uh, complement of the standard Chevy Safety Assist suite of technologies, automatic emergency braking, forward collision alert, front pedestrian braking, following distance indicator, lane keep assist with lane departure warning and IntelliBeam. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, lots, of, lots of safety um, things here or the new Chevy Blazer EV. A uh, major enabler of the Blazer EV's technologies is Altify, GM's new end-to-end -end vehicle software platform. It separates the vehicle software from the hardware to enable the frequent and seamless delivery of software-defined features, apps and services to customers over the air. So basically, you, Chevy can push out a, an update, you know, very much like Apple will push out an update for the newest OS. That will be... Uh, what we're looking at here for the vehicle. And, um, you know, many years ago, I remember GM getting into possibly the space of, you know, selling you apps for the vehicle, you know, different apps for, for from A to Z, right? That may be something that they may be also looking to eventually um, try to do as well. Um, seamless delivery, again, it's over the air. They call it over the air because it will come through um, the... Um, uh, I believe the cellular technology that's built in. Now, whether this is a 5G connection, I don't know uh, with the OnStar, but uh, we'll continue and read on and we'll see if any uh, information is available to us. <laughs> uh, Altify will allow customers to continue to upgrade and personalize your vehicle like never before as improvements new features become available over time. Uh, the Blazer, Blazer EV channels the power of the Ultium platform, which is the foundation of GM's EV strategy and the driver of the company's vision for a zero emissions future. All new body architect support architecture, I should say, supports the multiple range options and the three available drive systems, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, and rear wheel drive. So you really have uh, a plethora of things to uh, choose from. Uh, the flexibility of the Ultium platform enable our design and engineer teams to develop the Blazer EV to offer unprecedented range of performance and driving characteristics. Uh, the low Y proportions of the platform and the structural position of the battery pack contribute to a comparatively low center of gravity that enhances driving stability. And that's what I'll say about the um, the ELR. You know, it's got, it's so well planted that center of gravity is, you know, I don't think my car is 50-50, but, you know, as you get closer to 50-50 weight distribution, you know, handling becomes uh, really good. You know, that's a, you know, 
back in the day, right, <laughs> with uh, gas-powered engines, you know, uh, a lot of the gas-powered uh, engines um, were, you know, so front-heavy, whereas the back of some of these vehicles, you know, were a lot lighter, so it made performance a bit of an issue. Uh, SS takes all the Blazer EVs' performance capabilities to their zenith. Wow, I like that word, zenith, right? That's a big word. <laughs> with unique features designed to help maximize the Ultium platform's capabilities. All right, let's go to page five now. Uh, we will talk to you about when it comes to charging performance. Blazor EV delivers uh, with an 11.5 kilowatt onboard AC charging. Again, you know, when um, when you say there's charging stations, that's really just the distribution, the EVSE. That's the distribution of electricity, the electric, uh, you know, electrons. Um, the charging is actually done in the car, is at the vehicle. It's just a matter of how much you know, the vehicle, how much it can actually take, uh, let's say from a, you know, let's say you had a, a, a faucet, how much water the sink can hold, you know, so uh, the charging is actually done on the vehicle. Uh, along with high speed DC public fast charging capabilities up to 190 kilowatts, enabling recharging of up to 78 miles of range to be added in approximately 10 minutes. Now, certainly that is, you know, you know, it's weather dependent and, you um, whether there's any kind of preconditioning of the batteries before you get up towards the charging station, because the, you know, trying to charge cold batteries is not really the greatest thing in the world either. You know, you want to precondition those batteries, uh, kind of warm them up to a certain temperature uh, where the batteries like to uh, sit in that sweet spot to get recharged. Um, and that'll make things uh, a little bit easier. Uh, owners also have access to Ultium Charge 360, GM's holistic approach to EV charging designed to simplify the overall charging experience, including access to more than 100,000 publicly available charging points in the U.S. and Canada. I think that's um, which is kind of just rolling out now to some of the Chevy Bolt customers where you come up to an EV Go charging station and you just take the charging uh, handle out, plug it into the car, and the car and the... Um, electric station delivery station make a handshake okay and it automatically knows that it's your vehicle and automatically starts charging you and that's all you got to do is just plug it in there's no credit cards there's no fussing around the app um in theory that's the easy way to do it i think some folks have had some issues with it but um you know um, that I think is the ultimate goal is just pull up to this charging to electric vehicle distribution center, take that handle off, plug it into the car and that's it. And you wait your 10, 15, 20 minutes or however long you need to charge for and, um, and you are good to go. So let's get into this, uh, which I find really interesting is this police package that's being available, uh, on the blazer for the first time, uh, Blazer EV on the job and on patrol. In addition to civilian models of the new Blazer EV, Chevrolet will offer a specially developed police uh, pursuit vehicle, the PPV model. You know, they had the Caprice PPV for a very long time. Um, I'm thinking maybe the last 10, 15, probably 15, 16 years, it was based off the Chevy SS. That was really an Australian Holden Commodore. Part of the issue was is that some local police departments in the United States, they have a clause where the vehicle actually has to be made in the United States, and that was being imported from Australia. So that's why some of the police departments have the Chevy Caprice PPV model, and others had to go to Ford uh, for the Explorer. But that was one of the reasons why, because it was made, imported from Australia. Um Based on the Blazer SS model, the EV PPV will have the largest Ultium battery in the lineup and will be available in rear-wheel drive with a dual-motor all-wheel drive system. We'll use the Blazer SS's high performance from Brembo brakes to help ensure short stopping distances. And the PPV model will feature a police-specific interior design for police officers with ample room to accommodate emergency equipment and their gear. So, you know, having an all-electric police a car, I think, is an amazing idea. You know, because, you know, the, with the Ford Explorers and other Dodge Durangos that are in police packages and so forth, you know, when, when the officer gets out of the car, you know, either on a uh, on a stop or is just going back to headquarters for 15, 20 minutes or whatever, a lot of times they leave the vehicle idling. They leave it running because it's keeping all the electronics booted up and and in good shape in case there is an emergency, they can just get in the car and go. 
So a lot of times you'll see these, you know, police vehicles just idling because it's really just keeping the batteries uh, charging and keeping all the electronics on. But now with this being basically one rolling gigantic battery, you could leave that vehicle on all the time until you run out of a charge. But for a lot of local police departments, I think it makes sense because, you know, a lot of local communities, you know, you know, in my area, the local community is only maybe, I don't even know how many miles square wide or whatever. I mean, how many miles realistically are, are the local police horns driving in a day? Maybe, I don't know, 50 miles a day or 60 miles a day, you know, and then you have your morning shift, your evening shift, your early, you know, uh, your overnight shift. And you just plug those vehicles that were working the day shift. You plug them in when they're done with their shift at one, two o'clock in the afternoon. And then when the afternoon shift comes in, they take the other cars that are on the chargers, obviously, you know, it's just like charging your cell phone. I think it's a fantastic idea, a really great idea, you know, and with the new mail trucks that were, that are coming online, you know, um, I just don't understand why they didn't force the contractor to make them all EVs because an all electric mail delivery vehicle is the perfect idea to get people on board with electric charging and electric vehicles because, you know, they go out, they do the run, whatever they are, they're operational from, you know, seven, eight in the morning till five, six o'clock in the evening. You come back and they sit all evening charging. It's like the perfect use case for an EV. And I think this is also going to be a second uh, very good um, use case as well. Uh, the possibilities for the Blazer EVs, commercial and law enforcement applications are almost endless at Ed Pepper, VP of GM Fleet. Along with zero tailpipe emission performance, reduces the number of frequencies of certain maintenance requirements typically associated with fleet vehicles. Again, when you say fleet vehicles, you're also meaning, you know, livery vehicles and so forth, uh, company cars and stuff like that. You know, there's no oil changes. There's no transmission fluid. There's no uh, radiator fluid. There's no coolant systems. I mean, as far as the fluids are concerned, it's cooling systems, but not so much fluid based. There may be still a little bit of fluid in some of these uh, EVs, but very, very little to no maintenance. So certainly cut down on the costs there. All right. So let's get into the pricing and when it's available, as everybody has probably been watching for the first, last 47 minutes or so, waiting for this to come through. Uh, 2024 Chevy Blazer EV 2LT and RS will go on sale in summer of 2023. So about a year from now. Price starting around $47,595 and $51,995 for the RS. The SS will follow later in 2023. Price starting around $65,995 and followed by 1LT and the uh, lease vehicle in 2024. So the 1LT is going to start uh, just about $44,995. Now, As we've been going through this information, you know, we have not seen what the specs, powertrain specs are on the um, cheaper models on the 1LT, 2LT, and even for the RS, you know, we're really just talking that high performance number uh, for the SS. So we're not quite sure exactly what um, that is um, going to entail powertrain wise for your, for your 44,995, you know, (laughs) still almost $45,000 to still a decent amount of cash, no question about that. Um, Reservations are available now at Chevrolet.com, and the Blazer EV will be produced in uh, GM's um, Ramos Arzepe, Mexico production facility, which manufactures the current Blazer. So it's going to be on the same line as the um, current uh, ICE model of the Blazer. So, um, so it's all going to be made in the same factory. So there you go. There is our, uh, you know, uh, the details, the, you know, really nuts and bolts of the new Chevy EV, uh, Blazer. Once again, going to go on sale, the 2LT and the RS in the summer of 2023. So a year from now at 47,595, 51,995. And that's just about the, you know, in that ballpark with, you know, the Hyundai Ionic. Uh, five as well as the Genesis uh, GV60, also the EV6 from Kia. So we're kind of in that space, um, you know, averaging probably 50, 52,000 when you get all said and done. Again, that 
Um, SS is starting at almost $66,000 and depending on equipment wise, you know, once you add in, I would imagine probably the, whether that would be standard is the super cruise. I'm not sure, but you know, who knows how far that encroaches into territory, you know, with the Cadillac Lyric, as well as uh, an offering from Buick to be that's undisclosed at this point, you know. So, uh, you know, with the pricing, it's going to be interesting because there's going to be a performance model of the Cadillac Lyric, which I'll uh, you know, I'll bring up. This is the Cadillac Lyric for 2023, which is completely sold out already. So you have to be put on a waiting list for the 2024 model, which will probably show up right around the same time as the first EV Blazers are hitting dealerships and hitting customers. But again, the Lyric starts at 62,990, whereas you know we're looking at about 47 for the one LT, but that won't be until 2024, the spring of 2024, or maybe a little bit earlier than that. Uh, in the 2024 calendar year. So, you know, it's really about pricing here. And this has always been what GM has been, you know, Chevrolet, Chevy has always been the little bit cheaper option. And then they moved up uh, now to Buick and in towards uh, Cadillac and GM, where Chevy and GMC are similarly priced in certain areas. And then Buick now is that mid-range luxury brand. And then the top of the line, full luxury is Cadillac. You know, back in the day, certainly we had, you know, Chevy was lower end price and then you went from Chevy on over towards um Oldsmobile and then you had Buick and you had GMC you also had Saturn involved in that as well so you know it's interesting how they're going to price the um you know where the pricing stops for the Chevrolet SS performance model which I'm thinking maybe some options is going to come in a little under 70 and we'll see where the Lyric comes in the Cadillac the top line Again, they're all based on the same platforms. Um, and you can almost see, you know, the design language here with the charging doors on the same side and then the front lighting scheme, just like what we saw with the Blazer here just a few minutes ago. But again, you know, it comes down to pricing. You know, where are you going to get that performance as far as the Lyric all-wheel drive performance model and how much horsepower they're going to give to the um, Cadillac customer who's going to probably spend, I'm thinking, upwards of 80000 plus for it. So we got 547 horsepower or so in the SS Blazer. You know, where are they going to push it closer to 600 horsepower for the Lyric? It's going to be very interesting to see, uh, friends, how uh, all this kind of uh, plays out. Um, let's show you a few more pictures um, here as uh, we're going to wrap up our first look here in just a few minutes. But I want to show you the exterior of the LT. Um, so that front end of the LT here kind of almost has a little bit of a, uh, bol uh, Chevy bolt kind of look to it. Um, you know what, let's, um, let's go back here. Uh, that's the interior. I want to bring up the picture of the LT exterior. I want to show it to you this way. I think it's just easier. Um, so no, that's not going to work for us. Um, let's go back to our pages here so we'll show you the l we'll just do it this way here we'll do it with the overlay so again that front end kind of has uh, you know almost a chevy bolt boltish type look um we'll put that back into the stream here um you know what let's just go full screen with that and um we want to bring this up here uh unfortunately i can't bring up the uh, bottoms of the screen but um again we're looking at um the uh you know again like i said the front end almost has a boltish type look so this is your lt that's the exterior here is the rs obviously a little more aggressive there as you do see it um you know with the side kind of rocker panels if you want to call it that um so it's, you know, right in there where it's a little bit different than the LT, but it still has it, but it's not as as pronounced of a of a presence per se. Um, again, that's the LT. This is your RS model. Um, that's the exterior there. Um, this is the LT R, this is the LT interior, which is certainly a very nice looking space, uh, to say the least. Uh, this is the two LT interior. So the seats just kind of changed there. Um, I'm thinking probably, you know, uh, 
you know, just a little better material quality, whether it's all leather, I don't know. It wasn't really said in the uh, press release here. Um, and the, this is the uh, SS with that heads up display, which is key. You know, it's amazing how how far back GM goes with those S uh, with the uh, heads up displays. You know, I had a, a 92 Oldsmobile Cutlass that had um, a head up display. The first I really saw the head up display was actually in the late 80s, like in 88, 87, 88, 89 Grand Prix. Had it. Remember those Grand Prix that were on that, you know, refrigerator white color, you know, <laughs> with all the body cladding and the Pontiac uh, emblems all over the place on it. Very futuristic. Had all these little uh, LCD screens. They weren't even that. They were more like... Um, kind of like an old fashioned digital kind of watch that she used to have from a Casio kind of thing, um, you know, trying to go futuristic and high tech. But those are the first cars I remember um, with the head up displays, but uh, I, I love it. I love the head up display. I wish my Cadillac had it. Um, unfortunately it does not. Um, but um, it uh, really is a very useful tool. It's amazing how you don't even look down at the dashboard. Again, when I had my Grand Prix 98 Grand Prix, which I had for, oh gosh, 20 plus years. Um, getting into another vehicle that didn't have the head-up display was like, whoa, I got to keep looking down. I just never kept looking down at the speedometer, right? <laughs> Thankfully, how come with no tickets? So that's good. Uh, let's show you the uh, seats here. You know, that's uh, the RS. As the uh, red, I think adrenaline red type um, seating package there. It's not the full red, but uh, I'm trying to bring up here. Let me see if I can uh, do that. I think it was asking for me to sign in or something of that magnification. So let's go here and uh, we'll do this. Ah, there we go. Now we got our, um, let's bring up that photograph. Aha. All right. So we've got, uh, we've got our uh, situation back under control. There we go. So I uh, just had to sign back in again for my friends over at Chevy. So this is the SS interior. Um, you can see these beautiful red seats, which I, I love. I think this is really cool looking. And again, you can see the, uh, the circular design with the um, air HVAC controls. Um, you can you just spin it left or right and it gives you the temperature. Um, here's that 17.7 inch screen, our almost 12 inch uh, instrument panel or instrument cluster, if you want to call it that. Uh, the flat bottom wheel, which is very cool. Now, my thinking is this is running off the Google operating system as some of the new GMs are now introducing that with the Silverado um, and with the Lyric. Um, this looks like, this looks like uh, Android Auto or at least the Google mapping system is coming through that's the head end unit is the google maps in um the newer gm products not necessarily android auto per se but just the mapping system here because that's definitely a google uh, maps architecture or font or whatever you want to call it um again he did uh, ventilated seats which are always a, a nice feature um it didn't say in the press release whether it has the rear view camera for the mirror i would imagine it probably will on the top trims i can't imagine it not um again um i would think that that would be something that would be probably standard fare uh let's show you that charge port door again we saw that um in the video um it's a power push the power button and the, and the door spins down again very much like the lyric it's in the exact same spot because it's based on the same platform um but we saw the um the uh, individual in the in the video actually manually push it up. So I think the I think the lyric I think you just touch it again and it goes up power. Again, that's how sometimes they do it. You know, the Cadillac you spend another ten grand or whatever, and uh, you get the power. You know, you get the power on the way up instead of just on the way down. So the Chevy you got to manually push it up. What's the difference? You're just gonna close it anyway. So in some ways maybe just one less <laughs> one less piece of uh, hardware mechanics to break, right? Uh, but there's your DC fast charging as well. That's where those two ports open up and uh, those two connectors go in there. Uh, let's see what I'll, if I can bring up another picture here. Uh, let's just show you another shot of, oh, that's the head up display. And again, this is where 
you're dealing with the uh, Super Cruise system. So this is saying that the Super Cruise is engaged at uh, 70 miles per hour. Again, I love uh, sometimes these are Easter eggs. I don't know what 48211 means. I'm not sure. Maybe that's got some designation for Chevy or the Blazer. Um, you can see the range here, 290 miles. Um, so if this is the SS, so, you know, we're probably encroaching on that 320, probably maybe a little bit less because this is saying 100% charge and we're at 290, which would make sense. Maybe just a little bit less as far as the range is concerned with the uh, top and trim uh, in this SS. And then you can see the energy efficiency. The last 30 miles is 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, auto lane change is complete. So it looks like it's going to switch lanes as well for you. So uh, that leads me to believe that this is the second generation of Super Cruise that will change lanes for you. Like Unlike the Bolt EUV, where it will not change lanes, um, the Cadillacs do have that um, ability to change lanes once you it's safe to do so and you signal and um, it'll the vehicle will automatically change lanes which I have a feeling that's going to be really interesting to do uh, you can see the uh, the Prindle is on the stock which is um, I don't know maybe a little BMW ish you know Mercedes Benz ish when it's on the stock instead of in the center, but it frees up the center console very nicely. You see the wheel here. Uh, we've got a heated wheel, which is all important, especially in the winter time for the colder climates. And then your uh, stock over here for the windshield uh, washer fluid, as well as the headlights. Um, so, you know, that's one thing here the stock for the, the headlights, you know, some of those things really haven't changed much, right? I think it's just very user familiar, familiarity. I'll get that right. <laughs> Being very familiar with where things are and just from a touch that you don't have to look at it, you know, um, what that's going to, uh, what that's going to be. Uh, let's uh, finish up this video. Once again, we'll run some of the uh, video here. Uh, so some of the B roll video as they call it in the uh, TV biz, right? Um, uh, let's just go expand this uh, full screen and we'll just come up to see some of the, more running footage. So again, really a sharp looking vehicle. You see those headlights there uh, along with the, um, the Daisy I'm running lights Again, the accented package here for the back with the rear diffuser on the uh, Blazer EV. It's got that really low profile, which I kind of like, you know, almost has a coupe like stance to it. You know, um, I've always been a coupe guy, you know, I was the Cadillac, the Grand Prix. Um, my daily driver is a four door, but I've always uh, always liked having a coupe, and um, this vehicle really has uh, really some sharp lines to it, you know. Um, and in some ways, in some of the side profiles, you kind of get the Cadillac lyric little snapshot, but that's always been GM, you know, kind of gives a little taste of everything and certain trim levels and certain brands. But um, again, you definitely can see uh, the lower profile here than the normal uh, gas-powered, ice-powered Blazer. Um, and I love this... Uh, depending on what they're going to call the red, whether, I mean, my Cadillac is crystal red tint coat, but they come up with all kinds of names for the red. So I didn't really say what other colors would be available. Um, we did see that gray color um, in one of the photos as well. I've also seen the white um, in the uh, exterior of the blazer, which is this one here, uh, whether that's white or like a silver, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, I'm sure they'll have the full uh, complement of uh, colors in their palette. You know, maybe they'll, eventually branch out in some unique colors and make some special additions or something, you know, um, be interesting if Chevy were to have this as the pace car for the 2023 Indy 500. Um, I think that would be a great way to market the uh, SS to put it as the um, pace car for the Indianapolis 500, or dare I say, even the Daytona 500 next February, which would be just around the launch time of the RS and the two LT. So, That'd be really cool to have that as a pace car, an all electric pace car. Um, but uh, we shall see, as they say, right? But uh, yeah, I'm very, very impressed here uh, with the Chevrolet 2024, a Blazer EV. And there you definitely can see how wide of a stance that is. You know, back in the day with my Grand Prix, it's called the Wide Track from Pontiac, right? Maybe it added an extra 
inch or so, but the branding, the corporate branding was wide track, right? You think you're driving this gigantic wide vehicle, you know, that you need the oversized vehicle vehicles on either end of you with the lights going, right? But, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, definitely uh, a, definitely a wider vehicle uh, here than the, uh, probably the standard um, Blazer. Uh, we'll just run through some more of this footage here. Again, you can see as we showed you, you know, so this one here is 100% at 300 miles. So that's interesting um, for that footage. Um, this is kind of a cool, you know, I kind of like this as well. Let's just open that up. Um, whereas you can, you know, hopefully you can design the color of the vehicle to whatever you own, red or blue or white or silver or whatever. Um I, I I just love the the chrome accents around the uh, dials for the uh, air conditioning here. Uh, but now actually looking at this, this is not similar to the Camaro where you adjust the temperature on the, the outer ring. It's going to be that ring right there in the center. Um, and I like this startup sequence. It's very cool, right? Gives you the state of charge there, 100%. Um, active safety is engaged. Um, so really high-tech looking stuff. You know, with um, the red interior again, I love the red interior, and we'll just run some more of this footage here on the uh, on the podium, as they say, right? Um, as it kind of spins around in the, uh, the photo booth, but I love that lighting sequence. I think uh, that is uh, very very cool. Uh, all right, friends. So that is my first look of the all new 2024 Chevrolet Blazer. Uh, EV. Hope you enjoyed uh, this last hour. It's been a lot of fun. I want to thank Kelly over at Chevrolet for uh, uh, sending over the materials for us uh, to put together this video. So once again, uh, Kelly, thank you so much. If you're watching, much appreciated here at the Tri-State Traffic Show. Again, that's our first look of the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. Make sure you like and subscribe. This like this uh, video, I should say. Also subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Tri-State Traffic Show. Uh, this is a Monday through Friday operation. We're live 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Here on the East Coast, we do live traffic for New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut uh, every M Monday through Friday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern time. So make sure you join us, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, that would help us out greatly here in the Tri-State Traffic Center. Uh, so with that said, my name is Don Smith, Odon, here in the driver's seat. And this has been a first look of the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV.